Everyone, meet Ray. Ray is a gold level Rocket League player and father, but his son is a grand champion. Ray wants to be able to play his son and challenge him to a 1v1. I'm going to be helping him every step of the way as we climb through the ranks, learning everything we can so that we are ready for the final challenge. This is Ray's journey to Grand Champion. Yo ho guys, last video Ray learned how to wave dash, how to half flip, and he managed to take down two diamond players in a 2v2 thanks to the second part of the video where we worked on pressure and fake challenging. So far there has been a match of some kind at the end of the video, but today is much different. Today we are solely focusing on getting Ray up to speed, and I mean that literally. Although Ray is improving quickly and moving along better than I expected him to, he still has one fatal flaw that is hurting his progress in a diamond, and that is how slow he plays. Today's video will showcase a a lot of speed tips and drills that will help him look and play like a much higher rank. If this lesson goes well and he practices a lot after, I really think Ray has a good chance of flying through the diamond ranks. Oh, and last video I asked you guys if you wanted longer episodes and the answer to that was a resounding yes. And as a man of the people, I had to oblige. Our first drill has to do with power sliding. For the lower ranks who might be watching, if you're power sliding in Rocket League like you power slide in Mario Kart, you're doing it wrong. There's actually a website out there that tracks all types of statistics, and if we take a look at average power slide duration, you can see that as the ranks increase, the time of power slide decreases. Let's take a look at Ray and see if he power slides like a plat and fix it if he does. Whoa, sorry. Ray informed me that he just woke up, so while he's getting warmed up, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Top 11. Top 11 is a free-to-play football slash soccer for the Americans management game that's available on Google Play, the App Store, Huawei, Microsoft Store, and it's also on your web browser. I'm usually pretty careful with games, and I make sure that they're actually good games, and since Top 11 has been played by 260 million players worldwide with 4.6 out of 5-star average review, I knew this game was legit. If you like football at all, this game is a must to download. I was messing around on it for the first time the other day, and there's something so fulfilling about changing up your playstyle mid-match to aggressive and seeing your team- uh, Oh, <laughs> wait, they scored on us. As a manager, I kept messing around with different styles, and finally, we got the W at the end. Some more managing came after the game, where I won a bid on this 5-star player who is bound to be a menace on the field for me. The game has something for everyone, and is constantly being updated with new competitions, tours, and in-game events. The main competition aspect of this game is that you're going to play against other managers from all around the world as you climb up the leaderboards. If any of this sounds good to you and you want to go check out this beautiful and well done game, head down to the description and click the link to download Top 11 now and you can become a team managing boss. <laughs> the brain's still figuring out which finger's which. There you go. Yeah. Okay, do that a couple more times. You can turn whenever you want. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Are you holding power slide or are you tapping it a little bit or what, what would you say? I mean, I'm holding it the whole time until okay. I get maybe yeah, three quarters of a turn. Okay. Look at my screen and let me know if you see like a little bit of a difference and how quickly right. I'm turning around. You see a little difference here? Yeah. I wish I had a controller overlay for you, but basically what I'm doing is pressing it maybe for a quarter of a second. I mean, it's hard to time it, but this is what you're doing. And right. like you, you are turning all the way around, but it's a lot quicker to just tap it, get your car going in that just direction. Turn a bit and boost mm -hmm. out of it. Exactly. Try it right now with a like shorter tap of the power slide. Good, that looked a little better. Perfect, that was that was good. Uh, yep. I looked down a little too long. So now I just want you to do one or two, like around the ball. So like boost out around the ball and then power slide and then perfect. Good, I'm already looking faster to me. Perf, oh, that was good. Oh funny. yeah, definitely. That was so good, that last one. Yeah, there you go. A few of you guys commented last video saying how you'd like to see more moments of Ray failing, and so far, he hasn't really struggled too much to learn the concepts that I'm teaching him. But if you're dead set on seeing some tougher moments, I underestimated how difficult drill number three would be, and Ray definitely struggled. But since Ray got the first drill down already, I think it's time for drill number two, recoveries. For those of you who might not know what a good recovery is in Rock League, it's basically the ability to land on all four of your wheels, and then to make sure that you are also turned 
into the direction where your momentum is going. So then you're able to get back into the play or rotate back as soon as possible, which is also known as just playing fast. The pros are incredibly efficient at recoveries. To teach Ray how to recover, I'm going to do a drill that I don't think anyone has ever done in Rocket League before. I'm going to be driving into Ray and bumping him out of his spot to see if he can recover from it. We're going full vehicular manslaughter on each other. I want Ray to test it with me first to see if it'll work. Drive into me and then like jump. Oh shoot. Jump as you hit me. There you go. So I want to see you recover. Like see how fast I recover there? Hit me in the side and do it again. Uh -huh. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So see I'm like I'm back on my feet and I'm I'm in position. So I'll do the same thing to you and I want to see you recover. Alright. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh oh, we're on the wall. Okay, not bad. You landed on all four. I like that. I'll bump you maybe again to the wall. Okay. Uh, then a looted nose. So you're going to have to use a lot of air roll here. Yeah. Good. Perfect. One extra tip. So it, whenever, whatever your momentum is going, so go ahead and bump me again. And my momentum is going to be going towards orange. So most likely, and most of the time, I'm going to make sure that I go towards orange a little bit to keep that momentum and get the natural speed. And then I might do a power slide if I need to turn around, or then I'll flip, or I'll just, I'll let my momentum take me in that direction to, to keep the speed. Because the second, so okay. if I get bumped and I land this way, but I need to go towards you, it's like, now I have to do this really slow maneuver. It's a lot right. quicker to be hit this way and then just do that, right? And then I continued to bump into Ray for the next few minutes, which was surprisingly very fun to do. Good, that looked better. Yeah, that was much better. That looked like a higher level player for sure. That was good, I like that a lot. Recoveries are hard to practice because you learn them as you play, but I thought that this drill would help Ray get started on the thinking process behind the mechanic. But now it's time for the third drill, one that I thought would go a little smoother for Ray, but being a high rank has made me a little bit blind to how difficult some of these moves can be for the lower ranks. So we're gonna do a little bit of wall work. Yeah, two of my main questions that have to do with the wall. Sure, yeah, what are your questions? And then we'll see if we well, can Well, one is just like, the quickest way, if you're driving up the wall to hit a ball that's rolling up the wall, the quickest way down is it just jump and come to float down or? I think we're going to answer that. And your second question? Has to do with goal. Like when you go into the goal and then you're stuck, is it quicker just to come out like that? Um, yes. Okay. That, that I one's... see a lot of people just, yeah. you know, turn around and drive back down. There's a few, there's a few scenarios where you're going to drive to the backboard and fly out, especially if like, let's say blue is my, I'm on off or I'm orange and I'm going on blue and I take a shot. If I'm in here, just mm -hmm. drive, boom, jump, wave dash. And look, I'm already back. Okay, cool. Go to my screen, go to spectate. I just wanna show you what we're gonna do for the drill. I'm gonna call these swimmer laps. Basically all you're gonna do is jump at the wall and turn around. It's literally like you're swimming a lap. What this is gonna do is basically train you on what we learned the, uh, the other day with wave dashing so i always i'm gonna always wave dash off the wall here yeah that's something that i've been consciously doing the last couple of days is jumping off the wall instead Good. of turning around the drive this is going to be the most like mechanical feeling um lesson that we've done so far there's a lot of button pressing all your fingers are moving it's it's difficult uh but i yeah. really i really think this is going to be beneficial I let Ray go after this drill on his own for a little, and I instantly realized that this drill is a little outside of his skill range, at least if executed at the highest level and with speed. Side by side, you can easily see the difference between Ray and I. That is my main problem, and I know it is, is my air control when I'm in the air is the car, like the inverted controls. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like you could be upside down for a moment as yeah, well. Indeed. Yeah. How do, how do you feel about that drill? Is that one something you think that'll help or you I mean it's got me frustrated but yeah. 
That's because my fingers just, well, it's not that my fingers aren't doing, it's just that I don't have a lot of in the air car control and when I get upside down and things like that. It's always weird to say that like, I like seeing you fail, but I think the reason that you are failing so hard is because it is a really big weakness of yours. And the fact that we're doing it means that it's going to help mitigate that weakness pretty quickly. And you're gonna start, you know, playing better in more ways than just this random scenario where you're jumping off the wall. Like you're gonna get more aerial control, more stability. So Ray did a few more attempts, but hit a mental wall where it just wasn't working out. So we decided to move on. By the way, I hope that leaving in more footage of us just kind of working on drills and leaving in more tips and chatting is entertaining to you all. I don't normally leave this type of stuff in videos, so this is fairly new to me. But we are gonna do one last drill working on small boost pad rotations, which should help Ray maintain higher boost amounts. This is a little bit of more precision, but the trick is just drive to the left of this boost, flip into it, and you'll probably grab the next two without really having to press any more buttons. Yeah, this might be a two for one, learning how to side flip and get the pads at the same time. So. True. Uh, so you're saying go to the left, start and then, here, and then... Yeah. If you're moving quick enough, you can pretty much side flip from there, and then you'll land pretty flat. You're, if you just let the flip play out, you'll land on your L4 wheels. A little bit too far. Yeah, see, I, need, I need to work on the side flip. Is this just jumping straight over? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much like that. The 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 reason why you're gonna go not directly right when you side flip is that your forward momentum's also taking you like towards like front, I guess. Like you're side flipping, but you're also moving forward because you're driving forward and you have speed going forward. Yeah, see how you okay, went? That yeah, okay. that, made, that looked better. I'm trying to get too fast on myself before I know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, just try to line it up from right there. Yeah, so line it up from there and then it's automatic. It is not automatic, you are <laughs> a liar. <laughs> We didn't get too deep into this drill because collecting small boost pads will eventually be a memorized pattern of muscle memory, but I wanted to see Ray get at least one good flip over all three pads, which he successfully did right here. Yeah, that was good. As I mentioned earlier on, I wanted to touch a little on defense so that Ray is learning all aspects of Rocket League, not just the fancy stuff. One useful tool on defense is using the backboard for certain shots. The fundamental skill that you need to learn is the ability to jump off the wall and then maintain some height so that you can challenge shots like air dribbles, high shots, and even some flicks. This is okay. this is kind of tough because it's um it's a couple yeah, things. I've, I've tried to do it in games before and it yeah. didn't work out too well. So like jump off and try to land on me. No, 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 no. I, I want you to float to me. Yeah, I know I know what you want. <laughs> that might not be what you get. So this is where you're gonna probably jump while your momentum's going up the wall. That'll be a helpful way to uh, get a little bit of a vertical height. Perfect. See, now you can just correct. The air control thing is what gets me. Yeah, yeah. I guess um, this will be another drill then. You see this pad that, that's right here? I want you to jump off the wall and try to land on it as smoothly as you can. It's a lot easier for me when I'm like going over the backboard. Like when I'm going sideways. I don't know why, but I can, I can jump off that way better. I don't know why. And the reason why you're good at it is because we've already trained this. We've done off the wall aerials. It's the same thing, but you're on your backboard defending. And, right. and we, we drilled that a little bit, so that's why it feels a little more natural. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Ray struggles on the walls, so I wanted to really drill into him the different ways of jumping off the wall on defense. The next drill is the same thing, except for the position of the car is a little bit different. The first one was about doing an aerial challenge, and this one's now more about challenging on the ground. So again, I want your car to be sideways and pointed downwards before you jump. If you jump like that, you're gonna be floating for a while. Like almost like you would be driving off the wall, but before you, yeah, exactly. Good, good, good. That's it. I wanna see you do that a couple more times. Yes, yeah. All right, I'll do it one more time with a wave dash. Right. We're not done until you get it. There you go, there you go, there you go. That's perfect. We're getting close to the end of the session, and I wanted to help Ray understand how to dribble a little bit easier and how the physics work of turning the ball. Sadly, Ray was having a bit of trouble trying to get the first part of the dribble down, and he needed to vent some frustration. That was the first time I wanted to throw my controller during a practice. It pisses me off because I know how to do this crap. I do it all the time. Yeah. 
and now when you want me to, I can't. I knew that there was gonna be some times during this journey where Ray would be frustrated or not improving at a rate that he's comfortable with, but that is why Rocket League is such a great game. I think most people have felt this in one way or another, and pushing through these times is where real progress kicks in. One thing you shouldn't do though is over push yourself, and with that being said, I do have an update on Ray. If you're squeamish about eyes, you might not wanna watch this next part. Ray has an eye injury from playing too much Rocket League. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I'm not really sure what the injury is from, but the doc said no gaming for a few days and to wear sunglasses at all times. So we're taking a little break, which is perfect because 2022 RLCS Worlds is just around the corner. Hopefully I get to meet some of you guys there.